Hello and welcome everyone to the second session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series. My name is Carissa Smith and I am the Partner Specialist, primarily working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service offering and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled, but I heartily encourage participation through the chat feature located in the bottom right of your screen. And I just sent a chat message through there as well. There will be plenty of time at the end uh, of today's session for questions, so feel free to send them along via chat as I go through the demo or hold them until the end, and I will address all of the questions as soon as I'm done with my presentation today. With that, I'd like to get our brown bag session started. Today I will be focusing on the media streaming capabilities available in the DuraCloud software. And give me one moment while I transition out of the welcome slide and transition to my desktop. So I'm going to start today at the DuraCloud uh, at a DuraCloud instance. So for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm going to start with some background information about DuraCloud itself, and then we'll delve into the actual media streaming capabilities in DuraCloud. So the first thing that you should see in front of you right now is a, a DuraCloud instance. It's located at demo.duracloud.org, and this uh, what you're seeing in front of you is the DuraCloud administrator interface, which is a web application that sits on top of a DuraCloud instance and all of, uh, all of the content that's stored in that DuraCloud instance. It gives you the ability to upload and download content through the web, as well as run services on top of the content. Uh, if you were a customer of, a, of the DuraCloud service, um, you would have your very own DuraCloud instance running and your own URL to navigate to your DuraCloud instance. It would probably be something along the line of your institution name.duracloud.org. Um, for the purposes of today's demo, I have navigated to demo.duracloud.org, and I'm simply going to log in here with a test username and password. And again, the first thing I'm going to do is orient you to the screen that you're seeing, um, assuming many of you have not, uh, are not familiar with DuraCloud itself. So again, this is the web application that sits on top of your content that you've stored in DuraCloud. Uh, we used a tab navigation uh, within this DuraCloud Administrator interface. So up here in the top left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see four tabs. The Dashboard tab provides statistics about the content you've stored in DuraCloud in terms of the number of files you've loaded, um, the types of files you've loaded, and uh, how your DuraCloud instance has changed over time. The Spaces tab, which you can see is what I am uh, on right now, is where your content is stored. And spaces is a DuraCloud term for a content container or a content holder. And you can see the list of spaces that are within this DuraCloud account here on the left hand side of your screen in the spaces column. The services tab to the right of the spaces tab um, allows you, as you might expect, to run services on top of your content. And I'll show you a brief preview of that today as well. And then the last tab here on, uh, in the top left part of your screen is the administration tab and it allows you to see the list of users who have access to your DuraCloud account. And actually, I did the brown bag session last month on permissions and access controls, so if you're interested in that and weren't able to attend, there is a recording available. But moving back here to the Spaces tab, I wanted to walk through this interface um, and also relate how, uh, how it would relate to the media streaming capabilities. So the first thing I'm going to do is point out that I have a Carissa video test space set up, and that's really the first step in um, leveraging the media streaming in DuraCloud. You have to upload your media files, whether they be audio or video, to DuraCloud uh, before you're able to stream them out of DuraCloud and into your own application. So within the Carissa video test space, um, you simply click on uh, the space name to select it. In the center panel here in the content items area, you'll see seven uh, MP4 files, but they certainly can be other media types as well, um, that are stored within this Carissa video test space. And then on the right-hand side of your screen, in the, in the rightmost column, is the Detail panel. Um, taking a step back, I'll note that the DuraCloud interface um, is oriented from left to right, and you get more information and a more in-depth view of what you've selected as you move from left to right on your screen. 
and the right panel is always the detail panel and it depends on what you've selected uh, in terms of what details you'll be seeing. So since I've selected a space, you can see the details about that space in this right hand uh, column. If I had selected uh, an individual content item, for instance, um, you'll see that the right hand panel now changes to the content detail panel. And one thing I'll note right now is that you can have a nice little preview of a media file that you've uploaded in DuraCloud. And this is thanks to the media streaming service, which I'll show you how to deploy here uh, in just a little bit in the demo. But um, the service itself allows you to preview media files within the DuraCloud application itself, but it also allows you to stream those files out of DuraCloud. And the other thing I'll note is this nice little viewer that we embed around your media files. That's something that you can then use in your own applications as well. We provide you the capability to embed uh, the viewer as well as the stream of the media file. And again, it's a very simple interface, similar to what you would probably expect on, on YouTube. You have a play and a pause button, of course, and you can skip around uh, to anywhere within the file. You have the ability to expand the file to full screen and also change the volume, again, as you might expect in any uh, media streaming uh, viewer. Um, the, the first, again, as I mentioned, the first step of media streaming is adding your content items to DuraCloud. And again, a little background information, um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, within the web interface, we give you a couple options. You can add one item at a time here with the add one item button in the middle of your screen or add many items. And both of those buttons allow you to select content that is stored on your local machine. Um, you'll be presented with a pop-up window that allows you to navigate to uh, your local machine and pick one or several files to upload. So that's really the easiest way to get content items into DuraCloud. And we also have a couple other options available that I've demonstrated in other brown bag sessions. But again, the first step is getting your uh, audio files and, and video files stored into DuraCloud. And then uh, the next step is to um, deploy the media streaming service. So for that, we need to navigate to the services tab. And again, I'll let my screen share catch up here for a moment. First, you'll see here on the left-hand side of your screen uh, the currently run in, running services. Those are services that I deployed earlier, uh, earlier in the day. To see a list of all other available services, you'd simply click on the Available Services button. Um, again, this is located in the center of your screen. You would be presented with a pop-up window that shows uh, the list of all the services that you have the ability to deploy within DuraCloud. And uh, this morning when I deployed the media streamer service, I simply chose it from the list here by selecting it. Um, I clicked next down here in the bottom right hand side of the screen in this pop up window. The next window for each of these services uh, will give you configuration options. And depending on the service itself, you'll have um, either a few or many configuration options. Again, it's, it's dependent upon the service. You configure the service to run how you'd like, and then uh, you'll have a little deploy button again down here in the bottom right of your screen. And after you deploy a service, it will then be listed as the image server and media streaming services are uh, currently here listed. I'll note uh, again on the right hand side, the detail panel is uh, contingent upon what you've selected. So I selected the media streamer service, and you can see details about uh, that service. You can see that in, it is indeed deployed, hence it's in bright neon green. You can also uh, have the option to undeploy it. A couple important details that I wanted to point out here in the detail part of your screen. Uh, not only can you see that the service itself is started here in the details panel, let me highlight that for you. But you can see when I started it, again it was this morning. Um, but the one important piece of content that you need to pull out of this uh, detail is the streaming host URL. And this is something that we'll need to embed in our own, uh, in our own, or your own um, application or uh, website, so that you can stream content out of DuraCloud. So I'm simply going to copy uh, this streaming URL and paste it into a document on my other screen. Um, so that's the first first piece of uh, information that you'll need to save uh, to embed into your your own applications. And then uh, navigating back to the Spaces tab, you'll have a couple other pieces of information you'll need to grab before we uh, navigate out of the DuraCloud instance itself and focus more on how to embed these media streams into your own application. So the last piece of information that you'll need are the names of the content items that you wish to stream. Um, within DuraCloud, you have the ability to stream one file, 
mini files, a subset of files, all of your media items, uh, that, that uh, flexibility and that decision is up to you. Um, for, the, for the purposes of today's demo, I'm going to stream three media files out of DuraCloud, so a subset of the seven that I have in here. Um, one other thing I'll note is that I've easily placed them all in the same space, all of my media files that I wish to stream. However, you can have media files in every single space that you want to stream, in just one space or in just three or four spaces. Again, um, it depends on how your content locally is organized and how you want to organize it in the cloud. But with DuraCloud and our media streaming service, you can uh, have content streamed from various spaces within DuraCloud very easily. Um, but again, for simplicity's sake, I have uh, just them all located in one, my video test space, and I will be streaming just three of these content items. So I'm going to stream just my dog-related MP4 files. There are three of them. So I'm just going to note and type down in my, in my cheat sheet over here where I copied the cloud, uh, the streaming host URL. I'm going to copy down the names of these four files um, exactly, because we'll need those uh, to embed in our own applications as well. So dancing-dog.mp4, englishbulldogwatchingtv.mp4, and singingdog.mp4. So again, uh, just to recap what you need to do within your DuraCloud instance to set the stage for embedding uh, media files into your own application. Uh, first, of course, you have to upload your media files to DuraCloud itself. Uh, again, they can be audio or video files. We have a list of supported file formats on our DuraCloud wiki. Uh, the second thing you need to do is deploy the media streaming service to make sure that indeed the media files are streaming and available for streaming. And then the third thing you need to do is grab uh, a couple pieces of information. You need to dra grab the streaming host URL as well as the name of the content items that you'd like, uh, like to stream and embed in your own applications. So Linda, I see you've typed a question and uh, thank you very much and I'll get to it once I, once I get done with today's session. Maybe it'll be answered as I go along, I hope. So again, with that, um, that's the content information that you need from DuraCloud. So I'm going to actually step away from this interface for now. And the next thing I'm going to do is navigate to uh, the DuraSpace wiki. Um, we provide, we being the DuraCloud um, <clears throat> the DuraCloud project, provide you with a media streaming service support bundle that helps you really uh, get on your way to embedding these media files into your own applications. We give you sample HTML files as well as the JavaScript you'll need to embed your media files with that really nice viewer. So to, to find these support files, you'd simply navigate to DuraCloud. Uh, the DuraCloud space, and then assuming, assuming my uh, page loads, once you're in the DuraCloud space, you would um, scroll down the page to the download docu uh, DuraCloud software uh, section, and the Media Streamer Service Bundle is located down here in the Developer Resources, so the Media Streamer Service Support Bundle. Um, no, no need to memorize what I just did, I will send out, uh, I will post the link into the chat here once we get done today and it will be in the recording, of course. Um, so again, you would download this Media Streamer Service Support Bundle. It's a zip file, um, and I have already, um, <clears throat> I've already expanded that zip file onto my, local, onto my local desktop. So actually, and that is a good segue, because that's what we'll go to next. So let me just minimize this out of the way. So the Media Streamer Support Service Bundle has a couple different files that will be important to you depending on what your use case is when you decide to embed uh, media files into your own applications. Uh, the first two things I'll point out are the single player HTML and the playlist player HTML. Um, again, I mentioned you can embed just one, uh, one audio or video file into your application if that's your use case, or we give you the option to embed a playlist of various videos. Uh, into your um, your own application as well. And that's actually what I'm going to demo today because there is an extra step. Um, but the playlist player, or excuse me, the single player um, is exact, almost exactly the same thing that I'll demo today. There's just a few uh, additional steps that are required for the playlist player uh, use case. So actually the first step is opening up this playlist uh, player HTML page. And I'm opening it up in my favorite text editor, but of course you can use whatever you'd like to edit code or HTML. Um, I'm using Text Wrangler just for people who are on Macs who don't have a particular <laughs> um, code editor uh, at their at their back end call. This is an open source application as well, um, free, which is always wonderful. Okay, so the first thing within this playlist player HTML that I'll point out, um, for those of you who are familiar with HTML, um, there's 
two different uh, pieces of information that need to be embedded in the head tag as well as the body tag. So first I'll focus on the head tag. Um, you need to embed these two script line, line items into your own uh, HTML or PHP page, whatever whatever you're using, but in the head tag of whatever web page you're deciding to uh, embed these into, you would need to incorporate these two script calls. And essentially what they do is they call the JavaScript files that provide the nice um, video player uh, video player frame uh, around the media files that you'll be streaming. And again, these two JavaScript files are within that service bundle. Um, that we provide, we the DuraCloud project provides for you. The second thing I'll show is this onload playlist player stream host. And as you might suspect, this is actually the, um, the URL for the streaming host that we copy and pasted uh, out of the DuraCloud uh, interface itself. So you would need to replace that with the, um, the cloudfront.net URL for the streaming host. Um, and again, this is directly uh, tied to the streaming uh, the media streaming out of your DuraCloud instance. The last bit of information that you'll note here is the playlist.xml uh, file that's being referenced. And again, this will be the second step for creating a playlist. Essentially, you need to create the list of videos that you'd like to stream, and this is where you would do that. So bear with me one moment while I open up the playlist.xml. And again, that's another file that we provide uh, to you, so you simply have to copy and paste uh, these. <clears throat> So let me one moment while I open this up. Uh, you can see in the playlist XML that you have the option of noting exactly which files you'd like to stream. And again, before uh, earlier, I had shown you the three dog related uh, MP4 files that I wanted to stream. Um, so I'll note here, there's the title, the description, and the media content URL that you need to, uh, you need to adjust based on what content you want to stream. Um, so the title can be anything you want. Um, you can name it whatever you'd like or leave it blank. It's up to you. Um, I will show you what this looks like once we get to the actual streaming media file and where this appears. Um, but again, these are things that you can customize the name of the, the media file that you're streaming as well as a brief description. Um, for, for humor's sake, I have a, a bunch of dogs who are doing various human-like things. Um, but I think the most important thing here is the media content URL. This is where we need to exactly type in the name of the content item that we want to stream from DuraCloud. And again, we have to be uh, exact to the, the name that is stored in DuraCloud, so down to the dash and the file format extension. So um, I have a singing-dog.mp4 that I needed to uh, stream. And you can see that I've done the same for the other two uh, dog-related mp4 videos that I want to uh, stream and add to this playlist. I'll note down here that there's an extra uh, item, and I don't. I, I only want to stream three, so I can delete that. Um, you can stream as many items, as many um, audio or video files as you'd like. You just simply copy and paste and fill out the details. Um, again, as many as you'd like or as few as you'd like. You could have three, you could have 10, you could have 100. Um, I think you get into more usability questions at that point, but the sky's the limits in terms of how many you can technically, you can technically stream with the DuraCloud. Uh, streaming service. So again, we edited the HTML, we edited the playlist, so our so our um, <clears throat> so our player knows what video files we want to pull from DuraCloud and stream uh, within our own application. So the, the so the last step is actually pulling up your own individual web page itself, whatever file you'd like to embed these um, <clears throat> this media player on. And I actually have a sample. HTML page, which I'll pull up here in just one moment. So again, for those of you who are familiar with HTML, this probably looks like a pretty standard standard page. It has all of the typical things that you would you might suspect, uh, and and hopefully is properly formatted formatted. Though I did pull it off the web. So this is where we're going to take the uh, template HTML that's available in the playlist player that we edited it in the first step, and paste it into our own. Uh, index or other HTML or PHP page. So the first thing you need to do is grab those two script calls and embed them within the head tag of whatever page you're editing. So in this case, the head tag for this document is located right up at the top, of course, and I'm just um, going to paste those into the appropriate area. Uh, the next step is to um, copy and paste this onload section into your actual body tag of your 
of the page that you'd like to embed this in. And again, this tells uh, your web page to load uh, not only the player, but also the videos that you've, that you've selected in the playlist. So again, I just need to scroll through and find the body tag within this web, uh, web page of mine, which is located uh, right here. Hopefully you can see it. It's highlighted in yellow, hopefully on your screen. So again, you embed that in the body tag. And then the last step of embedding this into your own application is copying and pasting this div tag. And essentially, this is exactly where you want uh, the video player, video or audio player, to appear on your website. So the, th the three things, or two things, three lines, two things that we copy and pasted uh, in the first two steps, set the stage and pull in the appropriate, preload all the appropriate things for streaming content. And this last step is actually embedding that viewer at the appropriate place in your, in your web page. So I'm going to navigate down to the actual heart of my uh, web page content, and I'm going to paste it right in the middle of my website. So I have a title, and it's directly underneath the title. Um, and then you would just save these changes uh, to your web page itself. And then you would upload them to your, your web server or have your IT staff do it. It, it depends on, on what your institution's policies are. But assuming you have access to a web server, you would simply upload uh, not only the changes to your HTML or PHP file, but you'd also um, upload all of the appropriate related JavaScript and that playlist XML file so that your, your, your individual page can pull in the appropriate information it needs. And assuming you have done that and all goes well, you've uploaded, uh, your <clears throat> you've uploaded your document and all of the required documents, and I did this earlier today, I'm going to navigate to that sample index page that I created. And you should see uh, the media file streaming. Hopefully my screen has caught up at this point. Um, again, I'll note that you have the ability as the user now who has embedded uh, the media streams from DuraCloud into your own application, uh, the ability to choose any of the videos in the playlist. So again, I'll point out um, this is particular to the playlist player view. If you had just embedded an individual single content item, you would just see uh, everything on the left-hand side of your screen. You wouldn't have this nice um, title and description of the videos available. That's just available for the playlist. Um, the things I'll note, the, the dark, bold, white heading is actually the title that I mentioned before, and the information underneath it is the description. So again, that's how it appears on, on the playlist player view. And as a user, I can select any of these to stream. I'll put the dancing dog on first. Um, and then as a user, I can navigate to the third one if I want to. And you can stream any of these uh, as a user um, because as we added them to the playlist. Uh, the one last thing I'll note is that DuraCloud itself is, is streaming these out of DuraCloud for you. It's not pseudo streaming at all. You're not downloading this. Um, and that allows you to actually um, move around in the clip as you'd like to. So you can jump to the middle. You can jump to the end. There's no waiting for the entire clip to download. You're actually streaming this file uh, on the fly directly from DuraCloud. So with that, again, um, this is a really straightforward view of how to embed media streams into your own applications. Um, I hope it's been relatively straightforward. It is, it is a nice process. We give you a lot of the files that allow you to easily embed uh, these media files into your own applications. So the whole point of the Brown Bag series is to keep things short and sweet. So I will answer any and all questions that people have uh, available now. Um, you can submit them via the chat here. Uh, it should be in the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll voice Linda's question. Um, it seems that DuraCloud is offering both a digital preservation service, Dark Archive, and access features um, that add the ability to embed streaming media into your own applications. Whereas there is no reason that the technology cannot do both, I wonder about the interests of the majority of your users and how these different, perhaps competing interests might drive future development of DuraCloud. Does DuraCloud have a plan for future development that you could share which would Help us see your priorities for developing the digital preservation service versus the public access streaming services. That's a very good question, Linda. Um, DuraCloud is actually still in its infancy as a, as a public service, and you can see that we're trying to be uh, a wide range of use cases, both on the preservation and access side. Um, I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. Um, within DuraCloud, you can make certain areas of DuraCloud a dark archive, whereas you can open up others to the public and stream content out of it. 
Um, so you're able to subset your uses of DuraCloud, which is, I think, a great feature that you don't have to have multiple software or platforms uh, to do both of those things at the same time. Um, we have been focusing more on the preservation use case, and here in the next couple months we're going to be uh, making an announcement about a new service package more related to uh, directly to preservation. We'll be automating the preservation services uh, on behalf of our users, and there'll be a whole um, service package around preservation. Um, I'll be honest that we don't have a lot of folks using DuraCloud for access at this point though it has come up multiple times, both image serving and media streaming from the cloud is of interest to our users, though certainly um, we don't have a lot of people using those capabilities right now. So I'll say that um, from based on customer feedback and users' feedback, we have been t tending more to focus on the preservation services, but that's not to say that if uh, a couple customers came, came along and were requesting more robust media streaming capabilities that we wouldn't be uh, willing to add additional capabilities uh, around that as well. Uh, Bob asks, are any DuraCloud customers using the streaming service to provide access to copyrighted media for course reserves? Uh, no, they currently are not, Bob. That's not a use case that we um, currently, I don't think, are able to, to help with because when you stream a media file, it's actually open to the public. These streams are available. Um, so there's no uh, way quite yet to, to restrict access to these streams to just a couple folks that are uh, in a class or a professor, etc. And Bob asks, what are the price components for storing and streaming media in DuraCloud? Uh, storing content is a direct uh, pass-through. It just depends on the, the amount of content that you're storing. And streaming media, I would have to look at the Amazon prices, but it's a pass-through from what Amazon would charge you for, down, uh, for bandwidth usage. So, and again, that's based on how much a uh, user would actually stream. And I can get you the exact price information, but DuraCloud would just pass it straight to you. Um, we're using the Amazon streaming capability, so we would pass on uh, the exact Amazon uh, price for that. And again, it depends on how much your users are actually streaming. Um, when you're able to jump around, as I showed in the video, we wouldn't charge you for the stream of the entire uh, of the entire what 53 seconds of this of this video that I just showed. It would just be the the two or three seconds that I actually streamed that you would be charged for. Other questions that I can answer for folks around media streaming or any of the other DuraCloud services that you're curious about. Um, I'd also mention that I'm, I'm more than happy to take requests for upcoming sessions as well if you're interested more in the integrity, bit integrity, health check, preservation services that DuraCloud offers. Um, I'm very happy to do sessions on that as well. Any other questions I can answer for folks? I'm going to go back to uh, quickly one moment the document I was sharing and if anybody has questions feel free to type them in the chat now. And hopefully my screen will catch up here in just one moment. So if you're interested in trying DuraCloud out and you haven't already done so, feel free to submit a trial account request form. You get DuraCloud uh, under no obligation to try out for 60 days. And um, again, under no obligation, you can try out the media streaming or integrity checks or any of our other DuraCloud services and just see how things look and feel. Um, if you have a particular interest or use case that you're curious about, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to do another complete demo session with your institution. And uh, the other last important piece of information that I wanted to uh, let folks know is that my next brown bag session will be the 25th. And I see Linda has suggested uh, she'd like to see something about bit integrity, how many cl cloud services can we coordinate, any plans for active preservation services such as format migration strategies. All right, well, I will keep those on my list, and potentially one will appear as the next brown bag session topic. And Carol also wants to learn about the preservation services, so I think we might have a winner for the next session. Um, if you think of any other topic su uh, suggestions in the next couple of days, or want to see a demo of DuraCloud, or have any other um, questions about media streaming, or anything at all, please feel free to reach out to me at csmith at duraspace.org. Uh, this is my job, and I would be more than uh, welcome to answer any and all questions about DuraCloud. Um, if you want to find out more information about this DuraCloud brown bag series that I've started and hopefully is, is useful to everybody who's on the line today, feel free to check out the website. The link is on uh, the, web or the PowerPoint slide in front of you. And um, again, the goal of these is to make them short, sweet, right around lunchtime, hopefully where you are, answer questions in a, in a, in a pretty informal manner. 
and to help everybody out. So with that, I won't keep any of you for the rest of, of your day. I wish you all a wonderful afternoon or rest of your morning, if it's morning time where you are. And again, please feel free to send suggestions or um, other thoughts and feedback about these sessions to me at csmith at durospace.org. Thank you all very much for your participation today. It's greatly appreciated.